Welcome. Here I have this Dell Optiplex 3040, and this is an older computer. It's, I think, around 15 years old at the time I record this. And these computers are often used in corporate environments, so you can get them used readily. And they tend to be pretty good computers. I'd consider them somewhat of a commercial-grade computer. They don't have a lot of frills on them. They're just basic computers. Now, this one came with a Core i3, and it is the 6100. It's a four-core processor. Not super fast, but it will run Windows 11. This also has a DVD burner and such in it, USB 3.0. It's a relatively solid machine. Now, if we look on the back, this has audio, HDMI, DisplayPort, USB 3, USB 2, Gigabit Ethernet, and two PCIe slots. One of them I have Wi-Fi in, because this does not have built-in Wi-Fi. So this had 8 gig of RAM in it. I had some RAM sitting around, so I upgraded to 16 gig. I put a new SATA SSD into it, and it runs great, except for it uses this Core i3 processor, and I wanted to give it a little bit of a boost. So I went on Amazon, and I found this Core i5 processor, and this is used. So if you're going with used processors, you can get them very affordably. So in this video, I'm going to upgrade this computer, and I'm not a professional processor installer. I'm just sharing my experience here. Now, if you find this video helpful and you want to support this channel, put a link to this processor, although your computer may need a different processor, but I'll put a link to the tools and the thermal compound I'm using and maybe other things. So if you want to do something similar to this, it can be helpful to find out what processor you currently have. And I'm filming this in 2025, and an easy way to find out what a good upgrade would be is to go into your favorite AI chatbot and punch in what processor you have and then say what would be a good value upgrade for this of the same generation. Now, there's sometimes you can go between generations, but there can be compatibility issues if you're going for the easy route, like if you're not very experienced. It's nice to stay within the same generation. So I think there might have been some Core i7 versions, but the Core i5 is a good value. Now Intel has good documentation on processors, so you can actually Google the processor and it brings up the Intel page and it tells you how many cores it has and all the other specs. So to start with this, I have it unplugged. I'll just unplug the cord here because I don't need it plugged in. And on this model, we have two screws. That's not uncommon. So I'm using the Strabito screwdriver kit. This was sent to me by Strabito years ago, and I've been using it a lot. So these back screws are gonna be number two screws. So in my kit, I have number two screws here. It says Phillips number two. I'll place that in the driver and I'll remove these. Now these are thumb screws, so sometimes they're loose enough just to take off by hand. Now, depending on your computer, this might slide or lift or both. This one slides and lifts. Now to remind me, I taped this battery to the side. So I'm also going to just swap this battery out because it's cheap. Now this is a Renata battery. They tend to be pretty good quality batteries. And I'll put a link below to these also. I think this is owned by Swatch Corporation. So while I'm in here, I'm just gonna swap this out. So I have a couple things to remove here to get the battery out. I have this fan shroud and it has some kind of instructions here to get this off. So I want to pull out on this and lift up. And that comes out. And this is a good time to clean these components off. Here we have the fan and the heat sink. Now this fan is plugged into the motherboard right here. So I'll pull this out. Now I'm working on electronics right now. So as I'm doing this, I'm contacting the case. That keeps me grounded. So I'm at the same potential as the computer. Now if you're in an environment that's super dry and you have lots of static shock, you can use wristbands and things that dissipate static, but I feel comfortable doing this. But again, this is just my demonstration of it. You want to do your own research for your computer. So to take this off, I want to remove these screws. So I'm just going to loosen them up kind of evenly. And I'll just actually hold this down. I don't want it to spring up and cause uneven tension on this. Now you could use a electric screwdriver to take these out, but I wouldn't recommend doing it to put it back in. I think we're almost all the way out. So these have springs on these here. If we look at the bottom, we have the thermal compound. So I'm going to want to clean this off, and this was actually just applied recently, so I don't need to clean this super well on here. I'll just wipe it clean. And then on the old processor, I'll clean it because I'm not going to throw that away, but it's kind of messy. Now, I don't like getting this on my hands. It's pretty gross, so you could wear gloves, but I'm just going to use a paper towel. That's clean enough for me. If I was using a different brand of thermal compound or it was in really bad shape, I'd clean it up with some alcohol. Now to remove the processor, I'm going to pull this lever out here and it has tension on it, so hold it down and then I'll lift this up. And now this whole cage will come up and the processor can lift out of there. It's a little bit messy. I'm gonna see if it'll stick to the paper towel. It kind of did to help lift it out. 
Okay, so I got that out. Now that's pretty messy. I'll go ahead and clean that later. So the new processor came in this little container. I'll pull it out. Now I'm going to clean this off. It's probably clean, but I'm just going to put a spot of alcohol on my paper towel and wipe it down. I want good contact with the thermal compound and the processor. And that looked pretty clean. So I'll take this processor and I'll install this in here and it needs to be in the right orientation. So we can see there's a little arrow here and a little arrow there and I want to line those two up. So I'll place it on there. Now this cage will go down and I have some compound I'm going to clean off there. Move it back and forth to make sure it's situated and then I will lock it down. So I'm going to press this down and I'll lock it under that arm. So now the processor is in place. So I want to install the thermal compound. So this is Arctic MX4. Now the instructions say to make an X on the processor with the thermal compound. Lots of people have lots of different opinions on this. So if I'm doing it wrong, you can let me know in the comments or you can just do it the way you want when you do it. Probably a little sloppier than I would have liked, but I think it worked. So now I want to reinstall the heat sink. I think I was actually in this orientation before. So the fan cord is on the same side as the connector. So I'm going to place this down on the processor, lining up the screws. About like that. And then I'm going to tighten these down and I'll just kind of rotate around so I have even force. Now these have a pretty affirmative stop when you hit to the bottom of the threads. So I'll connect the fan back up. I just moved the DVD drive out of the way so I can have a little bit more room here. There we go. So if you want to put RAM in here, you can pop this front off here and pull this cage out and you can get to the RAM. This specific model has two RAM slots. So I'll place the SSD back. So next I want to change the battery out right down here. So to do that, I want to press in on the little metal tab and that will pop the battery out. Hopefully, yep. It's using a felt screwdriver. I'm going to use this little pry tool. Pop it out. And I'll install the new one. So I'm going to put it on the side without the metal tab first and then press it into place. And now we have the new battery. Now that will likely reset your BIOS, but this was running the standard BIOS. Okay, so I have the upgrade done. I notice I have some dust in here, so I'm actually going to take this outside and use my electric duster and blow this out. Now when I do that, I'm going to have a finger on the fan so it doesn't spin up and generate current and send it back into the board. But I'll just get any dust out of here. And then we'll complete this and test it out. Okay, so I cleaned the dust off of here. I didn't get it perfect, but I think that's better. And I put this back on here, the shroud. And now I can install the cover back on. So we have tabs here. That's going to fit in the front. We'll lay it flat first and then slide it forward. And then I'll put the thumb screws in. Okay, I'll get this hooked up to a monitor and we'll test it out. Okay, so it took a minute to boot up. It says the time of day is not set. Well, we took the BIOS battery out. So I'll just continue here. Okay, the system finally booted. I suspect subsequent boots will go a lot faster. So I'm going to go to the settings now and I'll go to system and then about, and we can see it has a Core i5-6500 at 3.2 gigahertz. So the new processor is installed. So let me run some benchmarks. Now I ran benchmarks prior. I ran web benchmarks. So I'll run those same benchmarks and I'll let you know what the old score was along with the new score. Okay, so I got 13.7. Now previously with the Core i3, I got 12.6. So that would be, I think, an 8% upgrade, so not huge. Let's run Jetstream. Now we may not see all of the performance increase in these benchmarks, but it's a test I can do pretty easily. Here we got 195.356. Previously we had 180.678. So that again is about 8% faster. Okay, so I got 855.04, and this was on the motion mark test. Previously, I got 821, so this was 4% faster. 
So that was upgrading from an Intel Core i3-6100 to an Intel Core i5-6500. And the question is, was it worth it? And I'd say probably. Now as an Amazon affiliate, I can't disclose what I paid for the processor upgrade. But for what I paid for it, I feel like this was a worthy upgrade. And the price can vary on it. So you have to make your own judgment. Now I could, in theory, sell the old processor. I don't know if I'll go through that hassle, but... I think this machine is now going to be good for doing basic computing needs like surfing the web and doing some Word documents and such. Now a computer this old would not be great for hardcore video editing or AI or 3D rendering. It could probably do some of that, but there's probably better options there. But we breathed some new life into this old machine and I think it's going to be a very reliable machine. Now if you're thinking about upgrading a machine this old, it can help if you have some of the components already. If you already have parts laying around, you can spread them out. And I could take this processor and put in another PC that had a worse processor potentially. But I could easily see this making another 5-10 years. So that's doing a processor upgrade in one of these Dell Optiplex computers. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.